No spring, and there's the valve stem seal. How did I get it out? Well, <clears throat> I went and I made this. So if you look, here's the spring. Okay, spring and seat. This goes and sits over that, like that. All right, so you see. Okay, see there. Then I took this pipe and I put. I sent this down the center of the pipe like this until it sat like that, sticking through this. Right. So it will basically be poking through, not that aggressively, but it, yeah, roughly something like that. And this would be inside this, sticking out, sticking out the top there, right? So it would be inside, yeah. And then just with my weight, I would press down and it would release the um, how did I keep the, the, the valves up? Well, here's rope. Alright, so this is some string rope thing I went to go buy at the haberdashery. Uh, marked off here on the string how much uh, string I put in for the cylinder to keep the valve up because I tried once and uh, the valve I looked when I was pressing on the spring, the valve was moving down with it. Um, <coughs> so, so, yeah, uh, this is now my second attempt I, I fed more string in what i did was i took the, the cylinder to almost bottom dead center uh fed 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 for days uh and then started cranking the motor over and got it to drop it or got it to where it got stuck um and that was enough to put pressure on the valves so that's the first valve uh intake valve uh, i'm gonna get the seal off and see what that looks like all right so, um, time to compare the valve stem cells with one another to see if we can see potentially what, what was causing the problem. Um, and I think we found it. Alright, look at that one. And yeah, look at that one. And the size of the opening around the valve. So, it's a bit difficult to show on camera. But there, yeah, I think we can see. Check that. Look, look how big that opening is and look how small that opening is so it's obviously it's worn away um, and if we turn it around look at the inside you can see on this valve how the f you, you, it looks like it's deformed a little bit there uh, definitely somewhere where's the new one nice and smooth no blemishes on the inside yeah, so I'm feeling pretty confident that this should resolve the issue. So if we put the original valve on top of our new valve, you can always see new valves. Right. But if you put the new valve on the old valve, you see the you can't see any of that old seal old valve seal see right but as is right, i'm going to grab it and turn it around and you can see there you can see the valve the valve seat no matter how that's the best i'm going to get it right so the opening on this valve is definitely bigger than that one so let's hope that solves the issue all right so now it's time to fit the valve um, so what I'm going to do now is clean up the valve itself. Okay. The reason for that is that so this cut out on top with a valve with a set. I'm going to put some uh, insulation tape around that to protect the valve as I slide the valve over. I cleaned it so uh, I can have the insulation tape stick. So I'm just cutting a piece off over here off camera. And here comes the tricky part because it's recessed. So that feels much better. So to promote uh, this going on, um, I'm just going to spray it with some general purpose oil 
and just to lubricate it a little bit so I can get it over the valve. There we go. And there we go. I think she's seated. It looks good. So you guys can see new Viton valve stem seal. There she is. I'm gonna struggle with focus, but yeah. So now what we can do is we can grab our uh, insulation tape, take that off, and then refit uh, refit the valves and everything. I wasn't 100% happy with the way that the valve was seating, or whether I knew whether it was seated or not. So what I've got here is a extended 10 mil socket, and I'll show you on the old seal. <sighs> So if you check, the, here's the seal in the socket, it fits just over and seats nicely on the edge. You can see, seats perfectly on the edge of the seal. So that goes over the valve and onto the seal like that. Um, yes, it's not bottoming, bottoming out on the seal, on the valve I checked, there's about that much clearance. So she goes in like that, we've got our hammer. We sit there and we just lightly tap it and I'm happy that she's seated. Alright, then putting on the spring again. So you'll see this is a dual pitch spring. We've got a large pitch and then a very small pitch where, where the paint mark is. That small pitch goes to the cylinder head side and the larger pitch to the top of the valve to the camshaft side. So that's how the spring goes back in um, and then it's just now putting in the retainer clips which I am trying to figure out how to do <laughs> so second seal is off I want to show you guys this <clears throat> you want to make sure that you do do it you see in here there we go that piece that's moving it's a piece of the seal that stayed behind um, you want to make sure you clean that off uh, before putting the new seal on otherwise that's just gonna create a leak right but that also just it's an indication of uh, how worn you know the seal is and uh, you know good for a good good job that we're doing the replacement I guess it's probably about two weeks since I made the last video uh, yeah so ended up ended up dropping one of the keepers down into the engine basically what's happened I was trying to fit it and uh, like quickly rushed to make a similar tool to this um, and one-handed and releasing the spring and the, the um, keeper wasn't sitting properly in the valve and it shot into the galley that goes into the sump for the uh, dipstick and uh, so I decided to open the sump up and there was nothing in there started freaking out eventually wiggled the dipstick around and it fell through down into the sump so I managed to get it back uh, since then I really had to rethink because I was like I cannot take this engine out. I don't want to take this engine out and strip it because I dropped a, a keeper into the motor um, so I came up with this tool I've done one cylinder uh, so that's four valves uh, already you can see over here so how the tool works it's the it's basically a copy of the one that's in the Nissan manual so how this will work is right so we will go here and we fit this fit this into where the bearing capsule came set right so that goes in there okay. and we have now, if you've looked at valve stem seal tools, I'm going in the sort of sets like this. Um, so I've gone and basically replicated it. But I've made it adjustable, so you can see here I've drilled a couple of holes, cut the slits, put the bolt through. This sits in one of these notches, depending on distance from, uh, from the valve, right? So that's basically what the setup looks like, and then from here you can press down. I'm not going to press down because there's nothing holding this valve up. But basically, yeah, it's very rough. How the tool's set up, um, and then it's, it's another way you can use any one of these bolt holes around here. 
on this tool and then you have your lever and you can press down on the valve take out your keepers change the seal press down the valve put the keepers back in and let it go yeah guys i am extremely sorry um the video quality has gone downhill not that it was up there but it's gone even worse um so basically what happened is um i'm pressed for time um and i've done a lot of work and i haven't filmed it so you can see <laughs> almost nothing <laughs> let's get this light sorted basically the motor is reassembled um, new belts uh, all of that stuff so i didn't take time to record the timing and how i did the timing um, and the sealing and insertion of all bolts and caulking and all of that stuff but let me summarize so i hope uh, i hope it helps and you guys can get some sort of an idea of what it is i did and how um <laughs> that being said i obviously haven't started the motor yet so who knows i could have done it wrong um but i'm just going to explain to you what i did and i'll confirm if it's right or wrong right once the valves were done got some engine assembly lube or gear lube use that to lube everything up while i assembled right so cams go in then you will match up your, your timing chain markings with the gears right right bank the circles on the gears left bank ovals on the gears once that's done torque it up to torque it up you put a spanner over the cam the cam's got a, a like a hexagonal shape cast into it put your spanner over that and your torque wrench on yeah and you torque it without the cam obviously turning then um, you install the timing chain on the the cam so when you're doing all of this you have the motor at top dead center of cylinder one now without the cams in place um you put the engine at top dead center it, it, it the whether it's on exhaust or on uh you know exhaust stroke on the compression stroke whichever stroke that depends on how you set up the cams so First thing I did was I set the engine at top dead center. The way I knew that is the key on the shaft must line up, lines up with a marking that's on the uh, oil pump. Okay, then you know, and also with a screwdriver protruding out of the uh, spark plug uh, area. And then that's basically your timing set. Then it's installing all the tensioners and buttoning this up. Um, that was basically that and then installing all the pulleys new belts uh, so the big thing i wanted to show you guys is basically the gaskets i've made for uh for the the leak issue that we had on the spark plugs so you can see that silver ring that's rtv now what i did was when i placed the cover down I laid a bead of RTV on the outside portion of the spark plug tube that sticks up, but like right on top, okay, on each one. And then I slid the cover down over that. So obviously now it's 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 like if this is if this is the the spark plug um, tube sticking out, I put the RTV on the outside edge, right? And you got your cover, which is your gasket, and that comes down and presses over like that. Right, so as it presses over like that, it's smearing that RTV and creating a seal. Then, after that was done, your seal looks like this on the, looking down this plastic portion. Your seal looks like this. Then I took RTV and I put RTV in and around here, made sure it seals up against the uh, tube and the inside there. And that's how I created the gasket for this. Uh, so we'll see if it works. Um, Remember it was still in the fire that was leaking, so I'm gonna show you what that one looks like. <clears throat> so, you can see the cylinder is nice and clean inside. And there's the gasket that I've made. Oh no, wow. There we go. You can see. Yeah, and that's basically what it looks like. So yeah. Um basically ready now to start assembling the core packs and then start putting the harnesses. I'm gonna play them and all of that on.
and buttoning up the front end. Hi everybody. I probably look like shit because I've had absolutely almost zero sleep. Been uh, really busy getting this car back together for tomorrow's event. Um, it's now probably around 9.30, I think, 10 o'clock uh, Saturday. So I'm gonna start the car now for the first time in a month. Um, so everything's buttoned up, um, put everything back in and installed. Uh, added coolant, oils, added oil, added power steering fluid. All the fluids are there, all the fluids are in. Um, just connected the battery now for the first time again. Uh, yeah, time for the first start. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, um, it was good fun. See you guys next time.